please stand. Everybody, please stand up and sing with us. You are holy, you are mighty, you are worthy, worthy of praise. I will follow, I will listen, I will love you all of my days. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy, and I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before Him, and I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy, and I will love and adore Him. I will bow down. You are my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for you. You are holy, you are mighty, you are worthy, worthy of praise. I will follow, I will live. I will love you all of my days. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. And I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before Him. And I will sing to and worship the King. I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before Him. You are my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for You. You are my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for You. You are my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for You. Be seated. I guess before I let you sit down, I did have someone ask, if we'll do one thing before we get our service started, if you'll look over towards your neighbor and say, good morning, neighbor. <laughs> good morning, good morning. We've gotten away from it. I know a couple of years ago we would get up and say, walk around, say hello, shake hands, but I don't know if everybody's to the point of being comfortable to do that yet, so we'll just start out with a wave and then... Then we'll get going. Um, as you can tell at this church, uh, you never know what you may be doing on a Sunday. Ain't that right, Kim? <laughs> Thank you for stepping in, singing the ladies' vocal. <laughs> That's right. Next up, I had someone um, a couple of weeks ago when Kim was out uh, sick, they said, you know, well, what are we going to do You know, if Kim can't come back and do the nursery? I said, well, it's just the next guy up. Somebody will step up and and we'll do it. Uh, we do have a lot of announcements, so I'll, I'll go ahead and get on with those. But a uh, you know, special welcome extended to all of our visitors. Uh, we'd love to get to know you better, so we invite you to leave your contact information on the back table at the back wall. There are some information forms that you can fill out. Um, moving on to the announcements, Ladies Bible Study meets here every Wednesday from 645 to 8 at the church. All ladies are invited to attend. The topic is Women of the Bible. April 9th will be our Easter egg hunt. That is on a Saturday. It's going to be the Super Bowl of Easter egg hunts. Or the March Madness. I was going to wear the ears. Okay, so 15 years ago, I'd have hopped up here. Not today. 
So the Easter egg hunt is coming, and I'm so excited because for us, it's really more like a mini VBS. Um, we're going to have games. We're going to have snacks. We're going to have Easter egg hunt. We're going to have crafts, and we're going to learn some more about Jesus and get to know each other better. We've opened up to the entire community this year, and along those lines, my lovely assistant, Emily, is holding these beautiful cards. These are literally engraved invitations to the Easter egg hunt. So if you have a neighbor that's been waiting for an invitation, you can take one home with you and hand it to them and invite them. Most people, Tom says, come to church because someone invited them. And if we don't invite people, they won't know. So I want you to take as many of these. I've got 125 of these. I'll make 500 more. However many you want to pass out, I will keep making them until you're satisfied. But however many of these you will hand to someone and personally invite them, I want you to take with you today. Um, and I'll have more next week, and we'll just keep them replenished until it's time for the Easter egg hunt. The other thing I want you to go ahead and start working on is we need stuffed eggs for our Easter egg hunt. And since we've opened up to the whole community, we're going to need a lot of eggs. So if you could start stuffing eggs, um, and the sooner you buy the plastic eggs, the better, because those will start to get gone in a couple weeks. Um, but do start working on that, and I will have next Sunday a big basket at the front door, and um, you can drop your eggs there. And we'll just keep collecting those until it's time for the Easter egg hunt. One more. Um, you know, none of this happens without volunteer support. So if you're willing to come help play games, help with crafts, help with the snack, or help with hiding eggs and helping kids find them, or just to mingle and meet our neighbors and talk to them about whatever's on their mind, um, we need you. And so if you will see me before you leave here today, if you're interested in helping, I'll go ahead and start um, putting some information together for you so you can decide what you want to do. If you already know, great. You can do it. So um, thank you for your support. Please be in prayer for our community um, so that we can get to meet some of our neighbors and um, start to have some influence for Jesus over this neighborhood. Thanks. I'm always jealous. Kim always has the best costumes. <laughs> I wear my rugby shirt today. She wears these uh, rabbit ears. It just doesn't seem fair. They do match. I noticed that. Um, let's say, again, April the 9th is the Easter egg hunt. That will be on a Saturday. Um, so we hopefully have a big crowd out for that. And then on April 14th, we'll be doing the Maud Day Thursday service. Um, I think this year it's going to be more a brief sermon maybe a song, and then a meal. Uh, so we would like for, again, we'll probably need volunteers for that. Uh, we're still working on the uh, menu for what we're going to be doing. And then we have the big day, April 17th is Easter Sunday. And then also on May 22nd, we're going to try to do a, a high school graduate Sunday to recognize the graduates. We usually do that a little later in June, and the problem with that is by the time we get around to recognizing them, they're not here. So uh, we never get to pass out our gifts. The, uh, again, our mission focus is uh, Backpack Buddies for Riverdale Elementary. I won't repeat all that because it's time to move on to the service. Tom, we'll turn it back over to praise and worship. And thank you all for being here. Will you stand up and sing with us? The King who is coming to reign Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain Life and salvation His empire shall bring And joy to the nation when Jesus is King Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to God. 
the King. For His returning, we watch and we pray.
clouds King and kingdoms will bow down and Every chain will break As broken hearts declare His praise Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion A Lion of Judah Roaring with power and fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee Make way before the King of Kings The God who comes to save Is here to set the captives free For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion A lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? A lion of Judah, he's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, a Lamb that was slain for sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Oh, 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 Before I let Kim take over, and I'm going to something come up, and uh, we've I forgot to do something at the announcements, and then some other things hit me this morning. Um, next Sunday after church, we're going to have a for visitors and those who would like to maybe explore what it means to be a member of Discovery and stuff. We're going to have a brief meeting up here afterwards. Uh, I'll tell you all about what we're going to do and what, what it takes to be a member, which is very simple. you got to say you want to be a member. Uh, <laughs> that comes about it. Uh, and we're going to do that. And um, for those of you who say, say, oh, my kids, there'll be something for the kids. We'll figure something out with that. And also, the other thing we'll do 
is uh, last time we got pizza, and everybody eat pizza, so you don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, the kids are going to be starved, we're going to be hungry. No, we, we feed you. Uh, so please, uh, it, it, it does say that you're going to join for sure. It just says you want to explore it. We get the opportunity afterwards to say, yeah, I do, or I want to wait a while, but once you take it and do it one time, then whenever you suddenly say, oh, I am ready to come and be a part, all you do is come and tell me, and we'll get that taken care of. So I do want to do that. The other thing I want to do, and this is something that hit me this morning, I look around, and pre-pandemic, and I said pre-pandemic, we had got almost no kids here. We had very few children for children's church, one, maybe one or two a Sunday at best. And I look out this morning, and I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, so, and then we got to some of the young at heart ones. Do this. But now, we suddenly, we have kids. And besides that, something we didn't do, pandemic and everything else, we have a nursery going. There's, what, two back there this morning, I think? Two or three back there this morning with, with my wife, and that's great. And I, I, I want to praise God for that. I want to praise because I was talking with somebody this morning in one of the bigger churches in the area they're down 20% in attendance before pre-pandemic. We're up well over 20% in attendance. We're up about double. We were right before pre-pandemic. We were rarely getting 30. And right now, the day, I think we're pushing close to 50 with the ones in the nursery. I don't know if we hit 50 or we're right at 50. But hey, glad that you're here. And I want to invite those that want to see if you'd like to be part of the group. and be a little bit more involved than you are now, to come next week. Kim? Good morning. So it's time again for the prayers of the people. And um, we always start with praises. And um, I usually wait till the end to share mine, but I'm going to share it first because my mom is here today. Thank you for praying her will. And um, she's doing great. So um, there's a big old praise. Um, Tom has a praise for attendance and for the fact that the, the voices of children are heard in the building. And nothing makes me happier than that. You know, I'm hopping up and down when I see people come in the door. Yes, ma'am. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Is, is, are there any other praises? Yes. <laughs> All right, well, Jennifer, for sure, I got drafted, so <laughs> she volunteered. A funny story with that, and I'll say loud enough to try and get over the mic. When I first came down to the church that I have for 20 years down the road a ways, they had a very small choir. And we had a thing that they they call cantatas. And the choir director, because we were getting a lot more people coming and stuff, said, hey, how about anybody would like to just one time come to practices and you can sing in the cantata? And suddenly we had about twice as many people there coming in practice. We had the cantata, and the choir director got up, who did what Kim does also on Sunday mornings, and uh, he looked and he said, oh, I, I do want to let, let everybody know, these people have all volunteered to now join the choir. <laughs> and they're all looking at each other saying, what? And suddenly, we had twice as many people in the choir from that day on. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> As David said, you never know what you might end up doing. Um, what other praises do you have this morning? Are there others? Okay, well, let's turn to prayer. Who needs prayer this morning? Trisha and Wendy. Trisha and Wendy. So, Trisha's brother um, is dealing with ALS, and their family is 
um, supporting him through that. And um, so they need our prayers, and they're also traveling there in New Jersey. Is that right? And then Wendy's mother-in-law fell and um, is hospitalized. So we need to be in prayer for her as well. Who else do we need to pray for? I'll ask you to uh, begin and continue to pray for our neighborhood and our neighbors um, as we start to open up more opportunities to bring them here and bring us there. Um, just pray that God will open hearts and open minds to just hear the good news. And we'll say it, and God will do the rest. Are there any other prayer requests this morning? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come before you this morning excited to be in your house, Lord. Excited to hear the message that you've given Tom excited for children's church and always excited for the children's sermon lord because we just never know what what's going to happen during those lord we just thank you that we're able to be here together that we're well um, and that we're able to intercede on behalf of our neighborhood um, to begin to break some ground there for you lord we know that in your word you tell us if we'll put our foot down on it that you'll honor that lord and so we just want to walk among our neighborhoods lord and be in prayer for all the needs there lord we just pray that you'll soften hearts and that you'll um, begin to open people up to the opportunities it's hard post covid lord because we're still sort of in our you know batting down the hatches and keep everybody safe mode but we trust you, Lord, to keep us safe and to keep our neighbors safe and to make good opportunities for us to make contact. Um, Lord, make us bold in your name to go out and to share what it is that you've done for us because those stories are the things that touch people's hearts. Lord, make us bold to invite people. Sometimes it just takes a few invitations for someone to come. Help us be bold, Lord, to do that. And we know that it's not on us to make people come. It's just on us to invite them, Lord. You're the one who motivates them to be here. But once they're here, Lord, help us love up on them. Help us see the need and hear the question that isn't asked. Lord, tune us in to your wavelength. And show us who needs us. And help us be faithful and obedient in serving the need. Lord, thank you for a church that loves missions. Thank you, Father, for a church that loves to pray together. Lord, we want to lift up Trish and her family, especially her brother, who's dealing with ALS. Lord, we still pray for healing for him. And we pray for strength and for endurance for his family and for peace over all of them. The peace that doesn't make sense to the world, but we understand it, Lord, because it comes from you. Lord, we want to lift up Wendy and her mother-in-law and all of their family as they support her. Lord, we pray for healing for her and restore her to her former health. Lord, we thank you that you invite us to come to you with all of these things. And that there's nothing we can't pray about. Lord, we love you so much. And we're in awe of the way that you love us. Thank you, Lord, that my mom's able to be here today. You do miracle after miracle every day. Help us not miss one, but to see them all. And help us be faithful to thank you and praise you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you're about to do. Father, when Jesus was here, his disciples asked him how they should pray, and he taught us this prayer. When he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now there was some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those eighteen who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Will the children come down? Got some girls today. <laughs> we have Sunday after Sunday with lots and lots of boys, so lovely, lovely. All right, so um, do I have a volunteer to hold this bowl for me? Got a bowl. Evan, you want to hold it? No. Charlie, you want to hold it? Okay. All right, so um, <clears throat> do you know what it means to bear fruit? That's kind of a weird saying, bear fruit. It's not about bears, but it is about fruit. So when you bear fruit, that means you give fruit. So an apple tree bears what kind of fruit? Apples. Ideally apples, yes, absolutely. A grapevine would bear grapes. What about an orange tree? Oranges. I can't think of one that doesn't have its name in the, in the tree, so that's good. You're doing great. So, <clears throat> when you bear fruit, that just means you give fruit, right? So, this passage today, Jesus is talking about another kind of fruit tree. It's a fig tree, right? Have you ever seen a fig tree? I bet you have. You just didn't know that's what it was. All those ficus trees that we decorate with, those are figs. They just don't bear fruit, right? So, anyway, bearing fruit. <clears throat> Does this look like good fruit to y'all? Everybody take a look. What do you think? Benicio, do you think these look like good apples? Do they look okay? Do you like apples? He likes apples. Oh, okay. He likes the green apples and the red apples. All right. So this fruit looks good, right? So let's, let's let some people hold some fruit. So would you like to hold a piece of fruit? Yep, you can just hold one. Yep. Let's see if Benicio will hold. Oh, he's got one. Anybody else want to hold one? What is that thing? What is that in the fruit bowl? It's a what? Hold that up. Why is there a sock in the fruit bowl? Ew! That is disgusting! It's not a smelly one, is it, Charlie? Maybe you'd rather not know. <laughs> so why would there be a sock in the fruit bowl? That's crazy. Apple trees don't grow socks. That would be nice, though, because we lose a lot of them in the dryer. That'd be kind of cool. Apple trees don't grow socks. They grow apples. 
Why did I put a sock in the fruit bowl? Here's why. You can put them back in here if you want. The reason I put a sock in the fruit bowl is to demonstrate to us that sometimes we bear good fruit that looks like these lovely apples that we're going to eat later in children's church. Don't worry, the sock was clean. Oh, you can hold it. You can hold it. Sometimes we bear good-looking fruit that you want to eat, and sometimes we bear a sock that nobody wants to eat, right? You don't want to eat that, do you? (laughs) She's cracked up. I love that. Jesus wants us to bear good fruit that's suitable for eating. And in fact, he tells this story about the fig tree so that people will understand that we are made to bear fruit, not socks. Our fruit doesn't look like apples. Our fruit looks like love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. There's a song that goes with that that makes it easy to remember those, and we're going to learn that later. So that's what our fruit looks like. Instead of apples, it looks like that. And he wants us to understand that we're made to do that, and so things are right when we're doing that. And when we're not doing that, it's like the gardener said, if it won't bear fruit, we'll just cut it down, right? Not let it take up space in the garden. So do you want to be bearing fruit or do you want to be bearing socks? Fruit. Fruit is good. Let's pray and thank Jesus for that beautiful fruit. Dear Jesus, thank you that you made us to bear fruit. Help us to be fruitful, Lord, with our love and joy and patience. Lord, we know that those things come from you. So help us always, always be close to you and to do the things that you want us to do. It's in your name that we pray, Jesus. And all God's children say, amen. And I will meet you in our room. One of the interesting, when you do studies in grief counseling and different things, and you try to figure out what to tell people, because the very, very thing, it's the first thing the persons ask, why me? Why my family? They ask the question, why? And Jesus addressed that today in the scripture we had because he tried to get to the point of saying, do you think that these people got hurt over here or got killed or worse than other people right in the community? Do you think that because someone gets hurt or someone gets a disease or someone dies, that they were worse people than the people right beside them that live? And of course... When you think about it, the answer is no. But it's automatic when something happens that we ask why. Why why a child had to die, maybe. Why this person that seems so full of life one day has a heart attack. Why? And you always go in grief counseling and say you can't really say when people are grieving, to look at them and say, well, you're asking the wrong question. Because that's their question. And as Christians, we know why. We know why tragedies strike. And we know they're going to strike the young, the old. We know they're going to strike the rich, the poor. We know it's going to happen. We know it. Why? Because you go back. God's plan originally was the Garden of Eden. Didn't mean to have a whole bunch of people on earth. Do you ever realize that? 
Childbearing came in after sin. Really, I have often ha heard theologians argue the fact that if God only wanted two people, he wanted Adam and Eve. There was no, he didn't plan for anybody else. He built a little garden, put them in it, came down every night and talked to them, walked with them in the garden. That was God's plan originally. And then suddenly sin came into the world. And when sin came in, what's one of the first things that happened? Cain kills Abel. We have death. Wasn't there before. And ever since then, if you really want to work on it, things that mankind has done causes there certain things that lead to tragedies, lead to disease, lead to death. So the why is easy. It still doesn't make it any better. But what Jesus is trying to get across to people, and he leaves this as kind of open-ended in this point, but if you go later on in the scriptures of that ch chapter, he kind of finishes answering the question, and we're going to answer it this morning. The real question is the why. The real question is, why did I get this, or why is this going on? The real question is, what? What are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about it when tragedy strikes? Well, when tragedy strikes you, you figure out how to go on. But what about others who don't have Jesus Christ? And the what is the reason here that we talk about evangelism, we talk about getting people to come to Christ, and I don't mean coming here, it means maybe a family member somewhere else or somebody we know is living in another state. We still win them over for Jesus Christ and get them into a church somewhere else. Because what do you learn from tragedy? What do we learn from tragedy? We learn that nobody's immune. We learn that nobody is going to live forever. Some are going to live a very short time. Some are going to live a very long time. It doesn't matter. The question is not why this person doesn't live long or this person does. It's what, what are they saved? What are they saved? Because death means nothing to a Christian. You know, that's the odd thing that people don't really realize a lot of times. Death means nothing to a Christian because it's just a transition. They're going, it means something to the ones that's left behind. Be realistic. Somebody asked me one time, what's a funeral service? And I said, a funeral service is for those who are still living person is dead. Their pain is ended. Their suffering's ended. They're, they're, they're with Jesus. Hallelujah. They're not grieving. It's funerals for the people that's left behind because there's a void in their life they got to find. And what that tells us, somebody asked me one time, what is the reason for evangelism? Well, the reason for Christians to have evangelism is how many of your neighbors and friends and people you know that if you, you could say, I can make sure you don't die, but you do it? Well, you do have that power. You have the power to tell people, I can make it so you won't experience death. Now, you'll do it here physically, but there will just be a transition to life everlasting. I can tell you how to avoid the tragedies of this world. And if you think of it that way, we all should be evangelists. You know, Jesus said that one time to everybody. He had a bunch of people up on the mountainside. He was getting ready to go and leave the earth. And he said, go ye into all the world. He didn't say go you or go you or let's get the pastor to do it only. He said, go ye, all of it. The whole, 
hillside there are people. And for his disciples, he said, go ye, all of you, in the world. And we each get different ways to do this. We each get different ways to tell people about Christ. Some just being a good neighbor and they wonder why you, you're spending the time helping them out. Sometimes as a family member who may get tired of you saying, well, you know, I go to church, why aren't you? Or whatever method you do. It may be sometimes just taking them. Kim's, Kim has just talked about today, outreaching the community by the Easter egg. It may be no more than handing an engraved invitation to another family with kids or something that you would like to seek them out to the Easter egg hunt. It's a start. It's a start. It may be something like we have here at the daycare, which is a community outreach. There's all sorts of ways to evangelize people for Jesus Christ. And the important thing is not to ask why there's tragedy in the world, but to say, what are we going to do about it? And what we're going to do about it is get people to know Jesus Christ because once they do that, for them, death is not a problem. Death is just a transition to a new life, eternal life. And that's what being a disciple of Christ is all about. We know, as one person told me one time, we know where we're going. But when you look at your neighbor, you know where they're going? If you don't, or you're not sure, or you say, oh, I know where they're going, it's not a good place, then there's your person to evangelize. There's your person to invite to church. There's your person to invite to some gathering we're having here. It don't even have to be a church service. It sometimes just has to be maybe just talking to us, finding out why we go to church, why we do what we do. So it's an important lesson to learn the why of death and tragedies it's easy. The sin of the world started it, and it still goes on today. And it will go on as long as this earth is spinning, as long as we have earth. But that's not what the real question is. Is what are you, if you're not a Christian, what are you doing about to get there? Or is what do we do as disciples of Christ to bring others? That's the real question. Not why, but what. And Jesus, and later on in this whole scenario, will tell people. Sin caused it. Tragedies happen. But guess what? You have a way to overcome it. You have a way to do better. You have a way to turn tragedies into triumph. You ever think about that? Instead of talking about tragedies, we should talk about triumphs. One thing that I used to tell people, I kind of hated the word funeral service. Why do you hate the word funeral service? Because mm. it, it symbolized that we're coming there to weep and mourn because Somebody died. And sure, there's some of that. But you know, actually, when you do a Christian, a Christian funeral, a lot of times it's a celebration of their life. In fact, there is churches now that are calling instead of a funeral service, there's a celebration of life. They call it a celebration of life, life of whoever. Because you get there, and it's not a sad occasion for that person. They're, they're, they're in heaven. Hallelujah. But it's a celebration, even for the people who's there that's missing them, to know that their loved one's there, and if they get right with Christ, if they're not already, they're going to join them one day. And in turn, sad times on this earth in the more joyous times, 
if the person is a Christian. If they're not, then funerals are a sad thing. Because funerals meant one, one lost opportunity. One, one person who didn't get the message. And I will tell you today, in this world, in the United States, there's a lot of people, a lot of people who haven't got the message. And we, every one of us, we're the messengers. And we've got to go out and start proclaiming that. It used to be in the United States it was very simple. Evangelism was very simple because the vast majority of people in the United States were Christians. And what was evangelism? Mostly fathers and mothers evangelizing their children. Next generation. And for years, that was the main evangelism in the church. Why did the church grow? Because there were, there were two, the two adults and they had three kids. If the three kids got the message, the church grew. And it did in the United States for many years. But those days are past. There is many fathers and mothers this morning that don't know Jesus Christ. And they have kids, and they're not teaching them a thing about Jesus Christ. And that's the sad part. But we have the answer. We have the message. And if we go out and we teach that message, however God gives us, and I don't say it means that we're going to be out here, we're going to be out here doing evangelism as going on knocking on door type of things. If God tells you to do that, go knock on a door. But just being Christians and showing the Christian life to our neighbors, helping them when they're having problems, helping people at work, whatever, God gives you the way to get a chance to, so those people ask the question, why? See, those people that don't come to church, you have the ability to Make them ask the question, why? Why do you take your Sunday mornings when you could be sleeping in or playing golf or doing something else? Why do you get up and go to church? That's the question that we want people to ask us. Why do you do this? Because we have the message. We know the message. Jesus Christ is the message. And that gives us the opportunity so let's start looking at changing our whys to what's. And when other people ask the questions why, then we can tell them what. And you know what? If we do that, the Church of Jesus Christ will grow. It's growing here because I know some people are doing that. I know people are out there saying, showing discovery to the world. And we want to do it even more. We want to, we, we would like one person said one time, boy, I'd like to see this church get up to having 50 people on Sunday mornings again. Well, people, if you count around and have all the people are in and out and stuff like that, there's 50 here today. There's 50 here today. Now we can start looking at about 100. That's the next, that's the next goal. How long will it take? The question, I think, is how, how much are we willing to do? I believe if we're willing to do what we need to do, that could happen soon. Sooner than any of us think. Why do I know that? Well, Christmas Eve. How many people were here Christmas Eve? Melody, do you remember how many people were here Christmas Eve? A hundred. We've seen it here. We've seen the potential. They were here that, sun, that night. That's the potential that we have. And when we hit 100, we keep right on going. My friends, we have the power to fill this congregation. And we're doing it. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. And you know why I can say we're getting there? If I counted right this morning, quickly, 
There's about 18 visitors here today that are not members of Discovery. Now, we shoot for 20. You know why we shoot for 20? We're going to hopefully, some of these ones that are visitors are going to come and become part of us. And we're going to go back down to only having 10 visitors or so. But we want to get right back up to having 20. And every other month, well, I'm going to, I've already made my mind, every other month I'm going to have one of these sessions after church. We're going to have one in March. We're going to have one in May. We're going to have one in July. Because I believe we're going to continue to see enough visitors to have it. Week, month, and year. And we're going to grow. And we're going to change the whys of this world to the what's. That's our goal. Isn't it fun to be a Christian? There's a song I wish I told off. The one we have, ain't it grand to be a Christian, ain't it grand? You remember that one, Tom? And it's a, it's a, it actually started as a kid's song, but it's great. It's a great song. It's grand to be a Christian. It's fun. You know what? One of the things I've really enjoyed being up here, when I first came back, I think 18 months ago now, when they pulled me off my back seat out there, I said, we're going to take you off the back seat sitting there and we're going to put you out front. And I agreed to it for three months. <laughs> and here we are 18 months later. But you know what? When first Sundays I came up here, we were pretty well down with the number of people here and stuff like that. And there wasn't any smiles on faces. They were here. Oh, they we're here. One of the things that I used to say was one of the saddest things when we had the benediction, everybody took out the door. It was a mass exodus, I mean, in a hurry. Now, sometimes you got to get out the door pretty quick. You got something you got to do. Understand that. But nobody stood around and talked to anybody. That's not the case anymore. That's not the case. And now, let's make it the case for a lot more people in this community. Let's, let's, let's shoot now to see how fast can we start getting 60 70 in worship. How fast can we make the membership of Discovery go up and up and up? We have the ability. We have the message. We know what it is. You know what the message is? Jesus Christ, eternal life. Simple message. You ever realize that's all the disciples read the Peter sermon and stuff? That's all it really was. He told them what Jesus Christ's life was and what it meant and what it meant for them. That's, he didn't have no great message. He just told them what, it, what Jesus Christ came to do and what they had the ability to have if they believed it. So, there's our challenge. There's our challenge. Now let's get to it. Amen? Let us pray. Oh God, we have a great message. We have the only message that really counts because of the message to eternal life. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for those of us who believe that question's answered. But there's so many more. Some of them friends, some of them neighbors, some of them people we might work with, some maybe family members who live away from here, whatever they are, whoever they are. Lord, give us a heart and mind and soul to reach out and continually try to find ways that they too can join the multitude who say, I believe in Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You stand and sing with us. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's a light for a look at the Savior, a life more abundant and free. 
Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory and grace Through death into life everlasting he passed and we follow him there Over us sin no more has dominion For more than conquerors we are Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace his word shall not fail you he promised believe him and all will be well then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation to tell turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Leave your offering to God on your way out if you haven't already done so. And now as we get ready to go our way, we do this with these Familiar words? Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ, who indwells you, has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in his grace and love and power. And all God's people say, amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his 